All right, gentlemen and ladies. Thought I'd bring you along on this inspection that I'm doing. An API internal inspection with UT. This vessel is an eight foot diameter, 20 foot tall vertical pressure vessel with an internal coil and even a mixer. It's not that unusual, but I thought I'd bring you guys along and show you how I do an internal inspection and my methodology. So the manway is directly above here. I've got the Jacob's ladder tucked up out of the way. And I have numbered the coils, every other coil, and then I have clocked the orientation for a zero degrees happens to be west for the orientation of the nozzle. And going around here 90 degrees, right here, there's the 90 degree clock. Notice I've numbered the tubes, right? Every other one starting on the bottom. And since I'm down here in the bottom to start with, I go ahead and start at the bottom, work my way up. It has a sparger ring, sparger bar that's bent into a hoop. So of course it's a ring. Here in the bottom, you notice you don't see any holes, and that's because they're drilled on the bottom. I'll show you here with the mirror that uh, they truly are drilled holes. Let's see if I can show them here on the bottom. Let's see, there they are. You guys see that? The holes on the sparger bar facing down instead of up. I went around here to make sure that there was no material blocking the sparger bar. It's pretty common to have product debris that gets inside of the, the sparger bar or other drain areas and plug it up. This one has been cleaned quite well and as a result it has a very nice uniform surface. Perhaps they cleaned it with a phosphoric acid. This facility is known for using that to their vessels. You notice here's a GER seam in the manufactured coil and these tubes have um, seams. The, they made the coil with seamed piping, seamed tubing. Notice the fretting at the uh, support U-bolts where the tubes broke. Um, this particular client is using a heat medium of of heated oil and it's making the tube grow quite a bit and as a result you're seeing some some light to moderate fretting uh, in the growth past the uh, supports which are these bolted u-bolts you notice some of them have been replaced over time because some of them have no corrosion and others have exhibit a fair amount of corrosion pitting in uh, this support bracketry. Like I say, the one above it, as you see here, it's brand new where it's been replaced. This is an interesting design in that the, uh, the support bracket is also the anti-rotation device for the liquid. And as a result, you've got bracketry. Let's see if I can show you this. You've got bracketry there that supports both the coil support and the anti-rotation device. See how it's attached with two fillet welds. The reason I point that out is some of them are actually cracked. Let's see if I can find one that's quite extreme. I think it's the one over here on this other side have to walk around here and make sure I don't get tangled up in the coil. Between the mixer and the coil, it's quite easy to get tangled up in here. So, let's see if I can set this flashlight down and 
zoom you guys in. So this support bracket here at the zero degree, it has been repaired. It has been repaired multiple times. And as you see, maybe you can see that. I've marked it in Sharpie. Focus, focus, come on. Work with me here, camera. Which is not gonna wanna play nice today. There it goes. Now maybe I can put it up from, up from the bottom. Yeah, that's much better for you guys, isn't it? As you see, the bracket is cracked in two locations. They've, they've repaired it once before, and I don't know if they used the same material and they just welded over top of it or, or what, but as you see, it's clearly cracked in multiple locations, three different locations. You know, one up there going horizontal and these two vertical ones going down through the bracket. I suspect it's from the coil growing and shrinking and it's put in differential pressure on the bracketry because the bracket over here that's mounted at an angle That's one of those things that when you're doing an inspection in here, you've got to pay particular attention to the support brackets because it is not uncommon at all to have the brackets crack or break out like that. So, something to keep in mind. Anyway, I thought, like I said, I thought I'd bring you guys along and show you that. I can show you this. Uh, this mixer assembly here, the impeller is on the mixer assembly, bottom nozzle, and this head is large enough, it's got a long seat right here. Let's see if I can show you. Right there. Right there, there's a long seam in the bottom head. So, down there, there's a thermal well back tuck behind there so anyway that's uh, kind of the methodology for doing this inspection and you know inspecting the wall is something you just got to look around the coil and back to the wall to, uh, to, to, to be able to actually focus there you go actually be able to see the wall it uh, these tubes are three inch diameter and they're spaced on six inch spacings. So as a result, you can't really reach through the coils back to the walls. That's why I've got a, a mirror out here. That way I can actually look at the back side of the coils and have a look at 100% of the surfaces even though I can't get direct contact with them. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Talk to you guys later.